yes from now on uh, this lecture is recorded so the first thing that I want to talk about is for example assume we have in our cplex implementation uh, when you open this cplex implementation or cplex file you have this setup uh, but the thing is you can change, you can remove some of the unnecessary views or tabs from this and also you can, if you like, you can add but sometimes mistakenly, uh, by mistake, you can remove some of the parts for example, look, on this left hand side you can see the projects, OPL projects you can see all the run configurations and etc. on this left hand side but as you can see, there is this closing uh, cross here. If you just hit it, and then you will not be able to see those projects anymore. It will disappear. And in this case, if you want to open another file, if you want to see the projects and etc., how can you find it? If you close Cplex and open it again, it will not still be here. Okay, so in order to open this, you should go to this window, okay, at the top there is these menus, go to window, and here you can see there is show view, and in this show view, you can see all the tabs that are in the working environment. So as you can see, this is OPL projects, which is the one that I just closed. If you just click on it, you will see the OPL projects again on this left hand side. The same thing applies to the uh, tabs at the bottom. For example, assume by mistake you close this solutions tab. Okay. Now, as you can see, there is no solutions over here and you want to see it. In order to do that, again go to this window, show view and then from here just click solutions and it will reappear at the bottom okay this is how we open and close these solution tabs and uh, you may just close unnecessary ones the ones that you are not using uh, if you like and whenever you need them you can reopen it okay this is the first thing that i want to show the second thing assume we have a model uh, as I said, you don't need to know what is this model. It is just a, a linear programming formulation. And it is not, uh, I mean, the data is already written in the model file. It is not read from uh, the data file or Excel file. Uh, but it's not important. I'm not going to show that. What I'm going to show is, okay, you did this formulation. And as you can see, there are no error messages everything seems to be fine and I want to run this model so I'm coming on to this run configuration that I want to run right click on it and click run this okay now cplex runs and as you can see it provides a solution it provides the value of x variables and let me open it for you as you move your cur cursor on top of this variable this button appears if you just click on it you will see the values of these x variables over here and there's something interesting here because i define my x variable to be float positive so it's greater than or equal to zero but when I look at the value of this x, I see that it is minus 0 0.98. It's a negative value. Now the question is, how can it be? I told cplex to have this x variable to be greater than or equal to 0, but it's negative. There's something wrong. You should understand here that there is something wrong. And the wrong thing is this when you solve a model the first thing that you need to check is if this model solved 
to be optimal or not because in cplex if a problem is not feasible in order to provide you some feedback in order to give you some information about the model even if the problem is infeasible cplex will provide you a so-called relaxed solution we will see what a relaxed solution and etc later in the next semester but for now you should know this that if cplex provides you a solution it doesn't necessarily mean to be the optimal solution first thing that you need to check is if cplex provided you the optimal solution or not and how can you understand it there are different ways the first way is to look at this problem browser and you can see here it says it's a relaxed solution okay here it is relaxed solution if it was optimal solution it should write here optimal solution or solution but here it says relaxed solution the second way for example is to go to this statistics tab at the bottom and you see it says no solution infeasible you see it is no solution infeasible and if you go to this solutions tab again here at the first row at the top you can see its solution and it says feasible relaxed sum of infeasibilities so it provides a solution but it says that feasible relaxed sum of infeasibilities if this was an optimal solution it should write inside this parenthesis that this is optimal solution okay so whenever you solve a model the first thing you need to check is if it is optimal or not and from here i understand that it is not optimal because in fact i have written one of the constraints wrong uh, and you should correct it you see there is nothing wrong with the cplex implementation cplex is correct it is running correct the problem is with your formulation and in your formulation this constraint for example here i have written by mistake equal equal but in fact it should be less than or equal so it's my fault not cplex's fault okay because of this because of my fault because of my wrong formulation it solved it uh, it provided me an infeasible solution now after uh, changing this uh, to the correct form i am running it again and it provides me a solution now look what does it say here it doesn't say it's relaxed solution it says solution with objective on this left hand side when i go to this statistics you see it says solution optimal and if i go to this solutions tab at the first row as you can see it says solution optimal okay this is important the first thing that you need to check if is this solution optimal or not the second thing look in this uh, problem i should have three constraints but again by mistake i forgot to add this constraint it's my mistake and i forgot to add it and because of that again if i run the model i just removed one of the constraints it's a mistake for of me and cplex provided a solution but the thing is most probably this solution is wrong most probably this solution is wrong it says here look it says here it's optimal in the solutions it says it's optimal but the thing is yes it's optimal with the given constraints what i give is cplex solves what i give to it right and it solves and finds the optimal solution but it's a missing model and the thing is cplex will not understand if a constraint is missing or not it cannot tell you this so how can you understand if something is missing if something is wrong you should look at these decision variables these values here you should write the values okay it says 
this is product one is zero, product two is 100, all others are zero. So this 100, what does it mean? It's the amount of product two that I am producing. Then put this 100 into your objective and calculate it by hand. If uh, Are you finding this same solution or not? Then take this 100 and try your constraints. Are the availability of the material, availability of the time, all other constraints, are they satisfied or not? Okay. If something is not satisfied with this solution, is something wrong, then it means that your model is wrong. There's something missing. And you should find that missing thing and add it to your model. CPLEX will not do this for you. You have to do it. You see, there is nothing wrong with CPLEX. The wrong, the mistake is with you, with your model. So be careful with this one also. Okay, so these are the things about this. Now I'm going to show you another model. Okay, so this is, let's say, config, this configuration. In fact, these are the models that I already developed in the CPLEX tutorials. So, but the thing is, again, you don't need to know what is this model. You don't need to know what's going on here. Simply, we are going to uh, see some mistakes, some errors uh, that can occur uh, in these CPLEX implementations. And now, as you can see in my model file, uh, there is an error message here. And in order to see that error message, you can either go on top of that error with your mouse, and as you can see, a uh, message bug box appears, or here at the bottom you can go to these problems, and you will see the errors here. And you see it says errors. In order to see the message of these errors, you should click at this uh, to the left-hand side of the errors, and you will see the explanations. And when you go to this error, when you double click on the error message, it will take you to the line that this error appears. Okay, so for example, let's assume we are here. I'm double clicking on it and it takes me to the line where this error message appears. There may be multiple errors. There may be, for example, 10 errors at the same time. In that case, just look at the first one. So there may be multiple mistakes, multiple errors, but you will solve them one by one. And first solve the, uh, the first message, first error. Because sometimes, because of that first error, there will be multiple error messages. And when you solve it, all 10 errors will disappear at once. If that does not disappear, then you need to go to the second one and solve it, and then go to the third one and solve it, one by one. Okay, I now have um, one error message here, and it says that on this error message, it says syntax error, unexpected sum. Okay, the first part here is important. It says syntax error. When it's syntax error, you should understand that you have writ wrote, written something wrong, either less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or most probably you forget uh, the end of line semicolon, okay? We know that each uh, line should end with a semicolon. Most probably you forgot it. And when you forget such a semicolon, the error message appears one line below. So the error message appears on this line. So you should think about this. Okay, is anything wrong with this? If you cannot find anything wrong with this one, it means that there, sh there may be something wrong with the previous line, with the end of the previous one. And as you can see, the error message appears just in the first statement. So it is uh, underlined by red. So it says that there's something wrong here. But I know that there is nothing wrong with the sum. So it means that the error should be at the end of the previous line. And as you can see, I forgot the semicolon here. And when I add it, 
uh, it should disappear. But now, as you can see, it, it didn't disappear. There's still a mistake. But look, the mistake is now changed. It says syntax error unexpected equal to. And as you can see, this red underline, the position of that is changed. So initially, the error was here, as you can see. But when I put this semicolon, now the error message appears here. And it says that this equal to, there's something wrong. In this constraint, I wanted to write a constraint uh, as an equality constraint. But as you can see, I have written the equality constraint by just equal to. But in Cplex, if you want to write equality, you should write it as double equal to, equal equal. Okay? So now, as you can see, th there is no error message here equal equal to but the thing is when I correct it there appeared seven other error messages so don't be afraid these error messages is shown to you one by one so when you correct these error messages you will see that maybe there are some other error messages don't be afraid uh, go after these one by one and let's see what does it say so as I told you, you should first go to the top one, the first error message. And let's see what is this message. So it says the, in this D, there is circular dependency declaring D. Okay, it shows an error message on D. Then I need to look what appears, what occurs with this D. So you should go to its definition here. And you can see there is this definition. And you can see, in fact, the first error message appeared here. The first error message. So although I double clicked on this first one, in fact, in my file, the first error message at the top was this one. So it is better to go to that one. And you can see it says that name products does not exist. What does it mean? I am defining a parameter P and I'm saying that this parameter P uses a range named products. Okay, now let's see where is that products, where is that uh, definition of these products. I cannot see it at the top because it is defined here at the bottom. Okay, there's one thing you need to know. You cannot use you cannot use a parameter or a range before you define it, okay? So as you can see, this definition is here, but I am using the products before that. It cannot occur. So what should I do? I should just take this from here. I uh, cut it and paste it here. Now, as you can see, the error message disappeared because I defined these products and after defining it, I'm using it. If you use it before defining it, Cplex will give you an error message. That's good. We solved this problem also, but as you can see, there are a lot of error messages. When I solved one, another error appears and the thing is I arranged this file uh, so that these are the most common errors that are uh, that are made okay let's go to next error message it says name i does not exist let's see where is it it says here okay in this objective function it says this you see the underline red underline is here and it says this i uh, does not exist. Okay, but the thing is, uh, when you look carefully, you are saying I in products. So I is already defined. Products is already defined. You can go and check D is already defined. So what is this mistake over here? And the thing is, 
you see, we, uh, what we want to do in this uh, function, in this objective function, let me write it here. Uh, let me write what exactly I am trying to do. So we want to maximize summation, let's say I from, what happened, just a minute, I from 1 to 5, let me see what was the function, uh, PI XI, okay, this is PI XI, plus di. So is this statement mathematically correct? Is it correct? The thing is it is not correct. This way of writing is not correct because this summation is only takes this part here. Okay? So in fact this is the summation of this part plus this part. And what is this i index over here? I know that this i index inside this summation is coming from this i. It is the index of summation. But what is this i? So in fact, I want to write this version. It should be like this. The correct mathematical representation is this. If I want this i index to affect this one and this one and this one, then they should be inside this parenthesis. If you don't write this parenthesis, this i index only affects this first term over here, and it doesn't affect this one. And my problem, or my error, mistake here is this. As you can see, this summation over here only affects the first part. It doesn't affect the second part. And if I want it to affect the second part, I should put it inside the parenthesis, like this. And as when I do it, as you can see, it disappeared. Good, but when I solve this error, there's another one. It says that in this first one, there's an error message, and it says that not an array type. And the error occurs, underlined part is here, not an array type. When you have such a error message, you should think about this ti and xi. You should look at their definitions. Let's first check this xi. Okay, so I define this x here, and as you can see, it is defined for the range products, and here I'm summing for i in products, so I, I don't see any mistake for this xi. It is defined correctly, it is summed correctly. Let's look at the definition of t this t. Where is it? Okay, its definition is here. But as you can see, this t is not an array. As you can see, the p or x, we have these products. But in this t, there is no range. It is just a single value. When you have this, when you don't have this uh, brackets, when you don't define it uh, like this, it means that it is just a single number. It doesn't have any i index. It is just t. It is not ti. It is t. But here, I'm defining it as t, but I'm using it, it as ti. So there's something wrong. Either there shouldn't be any i index in this summation, just remove it, or if it is an array, then you should define this t as t products. And when you do it, as you can see now, there is no error. Of course, I don't know which one is the correct for this model. I know it because I formulated it. But in your model, I'm not saying add an i index there. For your model, you should understand what is the correct one. I am, uh, do I multiply be with just a single number for each xi? It's always 5. Or it can take different values, separate values, so that 
I need an index of ti. Okay, so depending on which one way is the correct, you should uh, make the adjustment, you should make the change. And now, as you can see, there are no more error messages that I receive, but I have some warnings. And here in this warning, it says that element D has never been used. Okay, we have this element D, and it says that D has never been used. But in fact, I have this D in my model. Uh, sorry, this is a warning message. Look, in my project here, I have multiple model files. I have this model file, I have this model file. So the error messages and warning messages here are uh, given for all the open model files. So if you don't want to receive these error messages for others, then you can just ignore them or just close those files. And as you can see, there are no more error messages. Uh, and you can solve this. Sometimes, if there is a syntax error in the model, then, for example, like this, I forgot this one. And as you can see, there's an error message. It says syntax error. And as soon as I include this semicolon here, that error message disappears. But sometimes, sometimes, the error message uh, will not disappear when you make a change. In that case, you need to run the model. When you ch make a change, go and run the model again. And in that time, at that time, maybe the error message will disappear. Or maybe some new error messages, you will receive some new error messages. Okay, so running is the time of understanding if the model is correct or not. And as you can see, when I run the model, I receive another error message. And it says that uh, this is a common mistake. And it says that this Excel size of the range is not the size of the array. And let's have a look at it, where it is. I'm just double clicking on it. And as you can see, it shows me this P. Okay, so let me go and check where did I define this P in the model file. Okay, I define this P here. It is products. So products goes from one to n products, and n products I read it in the Excel file. So n products I'm reading it from. Uh, data 1, A2, okay, this is my Excel file, so it is data 1, A2, and it says that number of products is 10, okay, number of products is 10, so it means that my P goes from 1 to 10, 1 to 10, and now if I have a look at this here, P, I'm reading it from D2 to B6 in sheet data 2, B2 to B6. And let's go here. It's B2 to B6. How many elements are there here? Only five. But I defined it as to be 10. So there's something wrong here. Either I need to increase the size, uh, the uh, range that I am reading the data to cover all these 10 products or I need to change my number of products to 5 not 10 okay so let me change it to 5 I want to solve it only for 5 products and as you can see I made a change and whenever you made a change in the Excel file you should save it if you don't save it it will not make any change in cplex and then in cplex as you can see still there's an error message because i haven't run it i need to run it again right click on the uh, configuration and click run this and when i do again i received an error message but this time 
I received a different error message. It doesn't say anything about the size of the range and etc. It says here, Excel column 2 row 3 bed type. Cell is not a long. Okay. Again, I didn't understand what does it mean. Double click on it and it shows this P again. Okay. And it says that column 2 row 3. Okay, let's have a look at this. I'm reading this data from B2, B6 in data 2. Open the Excel file in data 2. I'm reading B2, B6. This is where I am reading the Excel file. And it says column 2, row 3. Is that the case? Column 2, row 3. And it says bed type. The type is not correct. It's not a long. Okay, let's see. What values do I have here? It's 8, 7.5. Ah, okay, you see, there is some decimal numbers here, 7.5. And let's see how I define this P. I define this parameter P to be an integer. Integer. But here this value is 7.5. It is not integer. So you cannot define P as an integer if the value contains decimal numbers. The correct way is to change it to float. Okay? So if your data, if your parameters are not integers, then you need to define them as floats. But here I did that change Still, this uh, error message did not disappear. Why? Because I didn't run it. Right click and click run this. Okay, now I have another mistake, another error. You see how many errors I have. I couldn't uh, solve this problem until now. Maybe I have corrected five or six errors, maybe more but still I am receiving error messages. And this is the case, you can have it. Don't be afraid, okay? We are solving them one by one. <clears throat> and the thing is, it says Cplex cannot extract expression. This is one of the common mistakes. And again, I need to go to the line where this error message is received, double click on it, and you will see this one here. And look, this is a very common mistake. So be careful on this. What I am trying to do here is I'm writing that for all i in products, this xi should be greater than or equal to xi minus 1. So let me write it. In fact, what I am trying to write here, let's say I have five products. And corresponding to these five products, I have variables x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. These are my decision variables. And what I want to write here is, I want to say x2 should be greater than or equal to x1. x3 should be greater than or equal to x2. x4 should be greater than or equal to x3. And x5 should be greater than or equal to x4. I want to add these constraints into my model but I'm going to add them in compact form. So what do I do? I say that this xi is greater than or equal to xi minus one. Okay, this is correct. And I need to say this is for all i. If I write it for all i, it means that it will go from one up to five because I have five products, okay, so it will go from 1 to 5. Now, you should put this 1 instead of this i, 1 by 1, and try what the constraint uh, that I have written uh, takes these values. Okay? If I put 1, what do I have? It is x1 greater than or equal to x0. Then if I put 2, it will be x2 greater than or equal to x1. Then put 3, you will have this one, up to x5 greater than or equal to x4. Now compare these two with each other. 
are they the same no they are not why because you see here the first one is not this first one I don't have such a constraint in my model this first constraint is wrong and in fact it is x0 and I don't have anything like x0 because the first product the first one is x1 x0 is not defined okay then it means that my constraint over here is not for all i going one up to five but it is i from two to five okay i need to write this constraint only for these values of i's you can also represent it this is one way to represent it or you can simply represent it like this for all i such that i is greater than or equal to 2 okay so these two are the correct representations you can use any one of them this second one says that write this constraint for all possible values of i such that i the value of i should be greater than or equal to 2 and it means that it will not write the constraint for i equals to 1 and now let's return back to this uh, cplex and let's see what happens now I'm writing this for all I for all I in products and products goes from 1 to 5 I know it but the thing is I don't have x0 I define this x to be from 1 to 5 so there is no x0 but if I put 1 here instead of i this part on the right hand side it will be 0 x0 and there is nothing like x0 in order to solve this problem what you can do is you can simply say that this constraint will be written from 2 to 5 you can write in in this way for i in 2 to 5 but the constraint did not disappear uh, the error message because we didn't run it go to here and click run this and when you run it as you can see uh, it's disappeared okay the error message disappeared so this is one way to solve it another way is this one which I suggest you to do this still I write it in this way I'm now using this second representation over here for all i i is greater than or equal to 2 I'm going to write so i in products now I'm going to write a condition here so put colon and say that i is greater than or equal to 2 you can write this in cplex okay and when you do it right click and run this and you will not receive an error message for this as you can see it gives me a solution but it says this is a relaxed solution okay why it is relaxed in fact it's because my uh, formulation is wrong because this constraint over here should be less than or equal to not equal to so click run this again and I received a solution after those many uh, let's say trials correcting many error messages at the end I received a solution and this tells me that this solution is optimal but still don't trust your solution always check your solution or look at your decision variable values and try to understand the, are they meaningful or not do they satisfy the problem restrictions and constraints or not okay always check this okay now final thing that I want to show you is here I have written that I'm writing this constraint for all I such that I is greater than or equal to 2 in fact the constraints that uh, the conditions that you can write here can be like this write this constraint only when i is equal to 2 so basically what do i do i say it is i in products such that 
i is equal to 2. Okay, I can write it. Or I can say that i is equal to 2 and i is uh, equal to, uh, or let's say, greater than 1. Okay, so here, in between these two, I want to write and. This condition should be satisfied and also, also, this condition must also be satisfied at the same time. But the thing is, you cannot write and here. Instead, we write this double and uh, symbols, okay? And symbol, we write it twice. So this is a condition. Sometimes we say that I want to write this constraint for all uh, values of i such that i is equal to 2 or i is equal to 5. Of course, these two cases cannot appear at the same time. If I write it here and, it will try to satisfy, it will try to write the constraint for making the value of i equal to 2 and 5 at the same time, but it's not possible. So it's meaningless. So you should uh, understand uh, when to use this AND. But here, instead of AND, I need to use OR, okay? If the value of i is equal to 2, write the constraint. Also, if the value of i is equal to 5, write the constraint. In both cases, I want to write the constraint. And again, I cannot write this OR, but instead, you should use this uh, symbol over here. Okay, double, uh, a vertical line, okay? And this means OR. By this way, you can write a condition. Okay, we said that we can write the conditions for which i is less than or equal to 2, i is equal to 2. You can, of course, write i is greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 2. And what else? You want to write this constraint for all possible values of i such that, let's say, i is not equal to 3. I want to disclude this case. In, and how do we write it? Basically, the symbol that you are using in that case is this. Exclamation mark and equal to. This means that write the constraint for all values of i such that don't write it when i is equal to 3. So it will write it when i is equal to 1, 2, 4, and 5, not for 3. Okay, so these are the several conditions that you can use here. And here, in my case, I am going to say that i is greater than or equal to 2. By the way, writing i is greater than or equal to 2 is equal to, or provides the same result, by writing i is strictly greater than 1. In not, I, I haven't written here greater than or equal to. I just wrote greater than 1. And this provides the same result with this one. Okay? So these are the things that I want to uh, talk about. Let me see if I forget anything. Uh, okay, one final thing uh, about this is when you are starting a new project, we start from file, new, okay, OPL project. Now here it asks me for a file name, okay, so you can write a name here, and as you can see, there is a project location here in your computer. If you don't change this one and create the project, the project will be under this folder. Sometimes you forget to save it to a different place and it creates the project into a default location. And after that, you forget that location. So in the first tutorial, I explained it how to uh, solve it or how to find it. You can go and be, uh, look at that one. But the thing is, when you have, okay, let me show it. This is my project 
if you want to see in which folder in your computer you have this project, just right click on the project name. Okay, this is my project. Right click on the name, go to properties, and here you will see the location. And if you just click on this button over here, it will take you to the folder of the project, which is this one. And inside this, you can see all the files of the project. Now, as you can see, the file is open here. If you close Cplex now and open it again, you will see your projects here. Your projects will be here. If you don't want to, if you don't close those projects by right clicking on them and clicking on delete, okay, whenever you open a project, it will be in front of you. But sometimes, some, uh, what can you do is, as you can see, this is my folder, this is my path of the project, and I forget about this, and take this, for example, file name, the folder name, and rename it. Okay, so click on rename and say LP in compact form uh, trial. You add something else, you change the name. And when you do this, what happens to the file here? Okay, it will not be able to find the files in their locations. It gives me, a, you see, an error message. It will not be able to find the files in your computer. Okay, so if you want to change the location of your project, if you want to copy and paste it to somewhere else and etc., you should change the location or maybe even you should recreate a project under that folder. Or you can save it, save this project under that folder using this menu. Okay, so you cannot just go and change the name of the folder uh, as you like, otherwise the project, you will not be able to use that project. And my initial name for the project was this. Okay, I renamed it. Let me see if I will be able to refresh it or not. So I just clicked on restart and when the I, uh, Cplex restarts, most probably it will find the files in the correct location and uh, it will open the files correctly. Okay, so these are the things that I want to talk about for Cplex. As you can see, it is opened and I can run this one because the files are in the correct folder. Okay, uh, so this is the end. I'm just uh, stopping the recording here.